welcome back to another AGP Creator Podcast. With me is a woman I love and hate all at the exact same time <laughs> because she done did it again and she made me read a book. I don't know what her problem is, but she keeps making me read books. Shame on you. Dishonor to you, dishonor on your family, and dishonor on your cow. <laughs> My best friend, Erica, or also known as E.E. E. Martin. Erica, I've missed you so much. Oh, I haven't like seen you in over a year now because like it's like I always get my first Amanda fix in April when it's like Dayton and Gym City and that was the like the very next thing I had to look forward to before 2020 kicked everybody in the backside. So. Yeah, well, I mean, we got to see each other briefly when you came and did the Gym City Comic Con convention. I did online. Yeah. That, and that, that briefly thank you for putting that together in 24 hours because 16. 16, 16 hours that's the amanda magic <laughs> and it's so funny because like like you there are a couple people like doing live streaming or doing this or that but there wasn't like a big show online and i did the one and then all of a sudden like now you see wizard world and san diego and all these other ones i was like i did it first me yeah, we're still trying, uh, you know, my, like, that guy that won't get, go away, Adam, we're trying to put on a, a Comic-Con soon, which you're going to be one of our special guests when we get that back going. So, uh, I'm glad that everybody has been trying to still, like, keep the magic alive, despite not being able to come together. I love how nice and clean and proper your background is, and mine's this cluttered <laughs> nerd mess. I, well, I just bought a house, so, like... Uh, this is the only room that has anything in it. This is where I write. So, like, every other room is just bare walls. I'm not, like, I can't commit to what should be put up anywhere. So, but it took, like, Look. if I take these down, you'll see, like, a thousand holes. Because I'm not good at hanging stuff. And, like, to me, like, the first day, it was like, oh. <laughs> it looked like I purposely was trying to do a slant, and I was not. That, that works, too. I got a spare space right about there in the house. Yeah, right there underneath the Gym City Comic Con stuff. That's about it. And I it's, do mean in the house. <laughs> it's, oh, do we have the same chair? Almost. Sort of. It's close. It's close. How, um, much, you get, how much for yours? 175 Pulled it out of the dumpster. <laughs> well, yours is definitely <laughs> freer than mine. <laughs> well, I had, I had one. And it's such a funny story because I live in a college town which now I'm never leaving my house again because we've had over 700 cases in the last two weeks because I live in a college town. And um, I had one like this, but it was broken. And I had just told my mom, I need a gaming chair with the amount of podcasting and the live Let's Plays that I'm doing and everything. And my mom texts me, go outside effing now. And I'm like, okay. And I run outside real quickly. And this is sitting there. So I go and I grab the old one. I take the pillows off of it because it, it came with pillows. Yeah. Yep. And so I took the pillows off of the old one, took the old one out, brought in the red and black one. But when I was out there, there's a white and black one out there also. So I snagged that as well. <laughs> I love. I came in with one, two, three new lamps, two new gaming chairs, and three new tables. I was like, yay! International students who can't take anything home. Yay! <laughs> Now let's, sta now let's sanitize it all real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best chair ever. Like when I wanted, I knew I was going to be in it like because I work from home and I also write in the same spot. And I was like, <coughs> the, who knows how to sit better than anybody but gamers? So it's like, right. I want a gaming chair and I will never leave this chair. No. I'm in it all day, every day. <laughs> Ever since getting a real gaming chair versus the computer chairs that I was using, I was like, I will never use a computer chair again. It is all about these gaming chairs. They're so comfy because I don't think people realize, you know, like you're writing and all the video stuff that I do. I'm sitting in this about 16 hours a day. Yes, that's, that's what I told the sales guy. I was like, 16 hours, I need to, like, it needs to hold me. So please give me the best chair yet. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want to be all, for me, I don't want to be like this all day. So, you know, I need, this helps with the posture, things like that. So, yes, this is like the greatest thing ever. I love it. I absolutely love it. And of course, I have to say, thank you so much. Now, I don't have the book with me because I've already sent it out into the world to be read. 
because I have a couple of friends who are fans of yours because oh, cool. I bought your I bought your book I bought more of your books last year for Christmas as Christmas presents. <laughs> So I, the buy that house. The so, that, so I help buy that house. So that's, part of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have it right here. Cause I remember posting it up on Facebook. Yay. It's a pretty picture. Sapphire's curse. I was, it was so funny. Cause you're like, Hey, what's your address? And I'm like here. Why? Whatever. Next thing I know, there's this book. I went, Oh hell. Opened it up and went, and read and read and read. You have a let's play. Okay, done. And read <laughs> and read and read and done. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yes, it is a fantastic book. It is a great book. It oh my gosh, I couldn't put it down. So again, you know I love you, but at the same time, you you all have to understand. I don't read books. I read comic books. I don't read books. Books for me, most of the time are dull and boring. And Erica will tell you, I'm a very hyperactive person. I'm very ADHD, just slightly. So I'm constantly having to move. It, it, I have to have the flashing and everything else to keep my attention. And so books and I don't get along really well. But Erica writes these books and writes these characters that it's like, you get sucked into the book and you're living through the book and it makes for an entertaining time reading a book, which is very rare for me because I've read some books and I'm just like, and we're on page, what, 50 and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every now and then. <laughs> but I mean, I've always loved your books and this one, yeah. holy crap. And you know, I know about witches and I know about vampires, but I love the fact that with this book, you make nods about these characters that we all know and love, and yet you still find a way to give it a fresh take on it without making the vampires glitter, of course. Thank you. Yes. Oh, that was my... I, I have always wanted to do a vampire story because I love classic vampires, but I also was like 18 during the Twilight phase, and I hate that book that shall not be named again and so like i swore years ago no vampires for me and then since that the dust kind of settled before she brought back that midnight sun book um i was like i i really wanted to come back to it but to that you hit it on i really wanted to give a nod to like the classics and like what we all know and love but still give it my own take without making them sappy and like, and I also didn't want to like overly sexualize them and I didn't want them to be pretty and glittery and all about romance. Like I needed, I think vampires are supposed to be monstrous, but they're still human. And yeah, so the, that's what I was hoping. I was hoping people like got the nods to like the classics and the greats, but try to still figure out a way to do, make it my own little spin on there. And, and you did a fantastic job and your characters are so addictive and your world building is fantastic. I can see these worlds when I read your books. I'm just like, and I'm there trottling along. La da 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 da. You're amazing. Ah, uh, thank you. So I like <laughs> talking to Amanda. It's like a good ego boost every time. <laughs> I mean, look, Amanda knows what Amanda knows, and according to Amanda, you're amazing. And since Amanda's always right, I can't. There's the heart. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just, it's such a fantastic book. Um, the moment you pick this book up, expect if you love fantasy and, you know, this has everything for fantasy and the magic and, you know, paranormal and just that itty bit of romance without it making it to be bleh, sappy. Oh, that's funny. That's the number one request I got for the second book was like, please give us more of the romance. I was like, but blood and vampires. And like, <laughs> how do I, like, I, I gotta have that too. So. Look, look, I, there are people who love romance novels and more power to you. I can't do romance novels. I can't do chick flicks. Like a friend of mine was like, oh, you've never seen The Notebook. No, I've never seen The I Notebook. Oh, it. let's watch The Notebook. I hate this movie. Oh, let's watch Titanic. I hate this movie. Here, let's watch one of mine. Where are we watching? Aliens. 
slight like difference. Alien or aliens? Aliens. I like aliens better as well. Oh, I love alien, but dude, aliens, aliens <laughs> is horror action. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marines, we are leaving. Yes. <laughs> That's just that's just mine. <laughs> it was it's one of those things. Like I, it's so funny when guys are like, "Oh, I'll take you to the movies." I'm like, "Okay," and they, they like pick like the the most pathetic chick flick thing, and he's all trying to do the, uh, and I'm like, "Can we go watch something else? Is it there like another Die Hard or something else playing?" Somewhere? I just watched Die Hard this week. I love that movie. Such a great Christmas movie. I don't care. I don't care. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas a movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a dog sharking right now. So he might pop in a second. <laughs> that that's fine. Uh you've you've seen Fizz Geek. She interrupts everything. I don't know where she is now. I gave her a bone, but when she's done with that, I'm sure I'll be in trouble. Mm. But oh my gosh. So how have you been? Um, it's been how's anybody been it's 2020 um i've been good, good. <laughs> um i i decided to move um so i got this new place because i really just wanted like place to spread so i got an, and i'm in a great new neighborhood i love my neighborhood um and I've been writing like COVID hit and I was like, sure, I'll catch up on books. But then after I wrote two books, I was like, wait, this isn't going to end anytime soon, is it? Like, <laughs> and so I slowed down a little bit because I thought I can't, I can't like write 20 books this year. Oh, um, you could. I could, but I thought maybe I should do something else. So like I started picking up some other, like some hobbies and whatnot. I can play saxophone again. That's my new, a new thing. Um, I should have had her just play the saxophone for this. No, you shouldn't have, because uh, I didn't say it was good. I just said <laughs> I, I picked it back up. Um, really just trying to, like, stay creatively connected with people. Like, I'm pretty sure the fields would like to block me on Facebook because I'm bothering them every day for either, like, draw my character or bake me cookies. If you're watching Amy, I still haven't gotten cookies since 2019. Um, I want cookies, Amy. <laughs> I want cookies. She would bring them to Comic Cons, but the last con we were at, she forgot them. And so I was like, okay, next con. And then 2020 happened, and I haven't had cookies ever since. Amy, if you're watching this, if you don't bring cookies the next time she comes to Gym City Comic Con, I'm banning you from that show. I'm the showrunner. I can do that. <laughs> I'd like to point out there's also, like, she could mail me cookies. Just saying. Like, they could be shipped to me. She has my address. Erica um, has my address. She <laughs> could give it to you. I do have your – well, I was worried because I hadn't sent you anything in, like, a year or two. So I wanted to make sure you hadn't moved, which I'm glad I asked because you, you had. Yeah. Very far away. Five feet. <laughs> but my I didn't, like, freak out your new neighbor of, like, why is, like, this random author sending me a vampire why story? <laughs> why not? The new neighbors moved in for the first time uh, since we had, after the neighbors moved into my apartment, um, I took my dogs on a walk past the old apartment. And when I was like, okay, guys, you're done. It's time to go home. They both ran to the old apartment. And I went, uh-oh. Guys, we don't live there anymore. <laughs> you have the, the two anymore. dogs and the cat, right? Two dogs, two cats. Oh, I only knew about the one cat. I have Lord Vader, Lieutenant Savick, which are my two cats, and then Fizz Gig and Shigo, my two dogs. Oh. You know I have dogs, right? Right. Like, you're my really? Do you have dogs? <laughs> Facebook has just... Really? Do you ever take pictures of them, put them up on Facebook by any chance? <laughs> I like how I don't even have to like, explain anymore. I just put like daily dose of my dogs. Told you. Aw, baby. Hi, Plunkin. She she now owns the computer chair that I refuse to sit in. That's her chair. Uh, uh, they have their own recliner. That's their thing. Can you say hi? Say hi, I'm Fizz Gig. I'm a Chihuahua Pomeranian Terrier mix. Also known as Lamb Piranha. Rawr. <laughs> Rawr. Seriously, I never, I hear all these bad stories about people talking about pit bulls and box. No, those. The little ones are like the ones to watch out for. I had a, um, I don't, do you remember Estelle? 
Mm-hmm. I had her. Okay. So she didn't die. She's just with my mother uh, because she hated me. And uh, so, <laughs> Cody knows who Estelle is. Um, oh, hi, Cody. Now I know. <laughs> uh-huh. That's my best friend. Um, and uh, she was, she was this little teeny tiny thing, but she looked like a straight rat. And um, she was evil. She was mean to Saturn. She didn't like me. Like, and so she now lives with my mom because she doesn't like to be told no. So we didn't get along very well. <laughs> she she picks who she likes and she instantly picks who she doesn't like. And I was taking her for a walk the other day. And you you I'm sure you've experienced this with dogs. People who have kids who need to put their kids on leashes because they do not know protocols around dogs. I'm walking the dog. I know my dog will bite someone if they run up to her. I see I see this guy and this kid get out of the car and I pull Fizgig close to me. He sees me. He's watching me. The kid goes, Daddy, puppy. He goes, Yeah, go ahead, go pet it. And I go, No, 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 no. And I'm picking my dog up. He's like, No, it's okay. My kid can pet. I'm telling you, no, your kid will get bit, and I'm not losing my dog because you're an idiot parent. Yeah, I uh I think like, Rebel's the one that's like can't decide you have to like watch her to know she how she's feeling that day if she's gonna be a rebel or not um so the problem is they're so like my dogs have such different personalities that one is usually really comfortable and one's not so it's like pull like <laughs> but we have a lot of kids in this neighborhood and they're pretty big fans <laughs> yeah well she go we don't have to worry about she's 17 this is what she does all day <laughs> she goes outside oh, she blends she's- in <laughs> She goes outside. She uses the bathroom. She comes home. She Is that goes bubbles? Is that bubbles? A bubbles pillow? Yes. I always like blossom. She's I, my favorite. I actually like buttercup. I, I like buttercup. see that. I was kind of surprised you had a bubbles because you're definitely more of a buttercup. And I feel but like I found that at a yard sale for a dollar, and there was no buttercup. So. <laughs> Yeah, my that's where that's where the stuffed animals go. I feel like you have more than that. Do you not have more than that? Oh, I do. They're in the bed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, the place where I the place that you put your bed but you never sleep in it cuz you're always in your office. So when you're tired, you just crawl onto the couch there, go to sleep, wake up back up and get back to work. Or this chair, these chairs like <laughs> They're designed for people to, to like lay flat. They can recline. Yes, they do. They do. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mean, you've been writing for quite a long time. This is your what not what number novel now? Oh, Sapphire Curse. Um, well, the last one that came out was the third squid book this summer. And that was number 18. And so when the second Sapphire Curse book comes out. That'll be 19. And then whatever I want to do next will be the 20th one. And, of so. course, you've been working with Adam Fields <sighs> yeah. on a lot of things. From <laughs> books to comics to even putting putting together your own com- comic book convention. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're working on a comic convention. And there were, um, there were some deaths with some friends. So we postponed a little bit. Um, but, uh, no, we're I, – I'm pretty sure – Actually, Adam and I met kind of because of you, because it was my first year going to Gym City, and um, I, I was waitlisted. A friend had told me I should go, but there wasn't any room, and then a table came open, and you told Jesse, like, hey, I know this, I know that person. You should let her come, and then that was the same year that Adam kind of got in, like, last minute, and I remember going up to his table, and he had, like, and he'll tell you, he had nothing. It was just, like, you know, like, here's a little of what I'm going to have one day kind of thing. And he had a few cards. And um, I had never approached anybody at a Comic-Con before. And I know, like, there's all these, like, stigmas about that. And, and so, I, I, but I saw his stuff, and I was like, he would be great for my kid's book that I hadn't even written. So I knew <laughs> how I sounded. I was like, hey, what, do, what about book covers? Would you do that? Like, I have this story idea. And I think he kind of like didn't think I was serious, um, but I was, and I haven't left him alone since. And he ended up redoing the uh, Warped Ones cover for me with the dragon on it. And uh, I love that one. Um, it's on my wall over there somewhere. Um, and then like, 
I think he's done every single cover since, except for my Asway books and then my fairy tale book. Cause that's some, a, another friend does that, but we're working. We've always said we wanted to collaborate because we, I think we talk every single day about, he does his comics like prowl. Um, and he, he, I'm constantly asking him to do like a piece of one of my characters, but we've, um, he kind of got me into comic writing. So I've been dabbling and I've done a couple drafts of different issues like his stories or my story. So I know we're going to, we were going to do it this year in 2020. Um, which gives you all the time in the world. Right? Um, I have been writing. It's just trying to figure out like which one is the story we really want to go with. And plus he's crazy busy. Um, like I have to continue to be nice to him. So he'll remember me as he gets even busier and busier. Um, but our plan is we, we were just talking about it this week is to get, try to get a book out together it, next year. But um, I think I love writing comic style. Like it's such a different, like I, I obviously like prose and I, I like writing for stage plays and screenplays, but comic writing is its own unique beast. And I really like actually the collaborative side of it because I like not having to think that through like, okay, I just know there's going to be a fight here, but I'm going to let you figure out <laughs> what that you do. Look like. <laughs> Three panels, you do it. Like, I don't care what that looks like. And then, but I also like the license to get really particular. Um, like we have, there's one that I've been working on that's like, if artists were superheroes, like if their art was a, like a superpower and so she like she plays this guitar and it like comes to life and so like the panels are like music notes and so the fight happens inside of these music notes and it's like that's how that's just fun to write but then i don't have to think through the things that i don't want to think through it's like okay you go figure out how it's like here i chose <laughs> i just have to write what in the, like it's so different than writing a book where i have to like help you see the whole world so i have to get really detailed I, I really like that about comics so far. I'm not saying I'm any good at it. He hasn't actually read it yet, so he, that one might not happen. It might be crap, but we'll see. I, I want to see. It. <laughs> I'll be I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I can I can envision it, but that's only because there was this cartoon called Silverhawks and Bluegrass. When he played his guitar, music notes would come out during the fight scenes. By the way, Cody wants to know what's number twenty going to be. Oh, Cody. Cody, you still have to read like five books. Um, <laughs> you haven't read five books. Shame on oh, you, Cody. Oh, well, let's see. This is my best friend. Let's call him out. Hasn't read the Warped ones. Amanda's read the Warped ones. Yeah, he hasn't read the Warped ones, and he hasn't read Squid, which I won't hold him accountable for because he doesn't like kids' books. And he hasn't read the fairy tale book. I think maybe he has. Actually, he might call me out on that one. And I feel like there's another one. So I'm just gonna throw it out there, best friend, that you should read the Warped ones. He read the the series that came before the Warped ones that you can't buy anymore, like the Ember series. But oh. he has it. He he. I told him that there wasn't as much romance in the Warped ones, and so I guess he lost interest. But it's still worth it. That was the first book and uh, Amanda read of mine were the Warped ones, Look, and she has a crappy Amanda cover too. Angry faces at him for you. There you go. <laughs> One of my emos that you get if you uh, subscribe to the channel. What? It's still my show. Self promote a little. <laughs> hmm. No, so I don't yeah. know what number twenty is. I've got like. <laughs> it's gonna be the comic options. book. Number twenty is the comic book. I don't know book. if I'll count. I, I won't count. That'll be my f number one comic book. Um, I don't know what it's gonna be. Everybody like it's whatever mood. My aunt will like hurt me if I don't finish the Squid series. He said, "Nope, that's it." I'm gonna quiz him. Like, <laughs> bring him on. <laughs> if you really read it, what happened? <laughs> Cody will be the first ever winner of the Erica Martin novel quiz. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they always have like Harry Potter quizzes. We could do your own series of quizzes from the Warped Ones to <laughs> Squid and everything else. That'd be awesome. He's he's uh he's put up with many uh, telling him about stories. So I shouldn't give him such a hard time. There's more than likely a delay. It's just the yeah. way how it works. Um, because Twitch is not StreamYard's preferred. They prefer you to do it on YouTube or Facebook. But uh, I make money on Twitch. So I, I, I signed that affiliate thing. So all of my live streams have to be here on Twitch. Because I want the money. Because I, I like the money. Because... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if anybody. I don't know if we've mentioned this yet, but the, this is 2020. There might be a pandemic, and Amanda went. I'm up out of my job, and I left. 
I yeeted out of there. I was like, yeet, nope, I am not <laughs> working with the public anymore. I'm out. No. He goes, very fair. Thank you, Cody. I like him. Can we he, keep him? He's a good guy. He was on a book cover at one point. He, like, totally inspired. It was in the Saturn series before Adam redid it. Adam pretty much, just, like, just Well, you've been replaced, Cody. Adam's like, nah, I don't like that. Mm, how about this? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm really happy that I was able to get you into that show and that you were with Ad you got to meet Adam. Womp womp. <laughs> yeah, I met I met him at Ice, if you remember that one. Mm -hmm. But like we didn't talk. So it wasn't until Gem City that I was like, Hey stranger, <laughs> you wanna do a book cover for a book I haven't even done yet? Please and thank you. Uh, <laughs> but then I think I've told you the story, the one with the dragon on it. The old cover got put on a website for worst book covers ever. So, yeah, I was like, that was devastating. Because I, I used to not know cool people like you and Adam. And I got started, like, I was 20 and just putting it out there. And I had no visual artistic skill at all. And was like, just whatever I could make in, like, crappy, like, paint workshop type thing. <laughs> And put it out and it got put on the website so that was the first thing i had him do i was like can you redo this <laughs> you know what though we all start somewhere i mean how many times have i revamped my logo come on till i finally decided this is the logo that i want i'm really digging the intro music too like it's super catchy i was like this is legit <laughs> <laughs> wait till you hear the outro music <laughs> Ooh, like my sailor mars you know i i was thinking of that like because Sailor Moon, I think I've told you this last time we talked, was like a big inspiration for me as a kid. And like my planet series, like will not deny that like heavily inspired by just like my love of that concept. But uh, I used to hate Sailor Mars, but now that I'm older and mature, like she's the legit one of the, five, the like the main five. I still really like Jupiter because I always liked how tough she was. And I think her, like, lighting power is pretty epic. But then I like the Outer Scouts. No. The Outer Scouts are fantastic. Out of the main, though, uh, Mars will always be my favorite. Uh, there's this thing about I love fire. Mm -hmm. I like fire. <laughs> fire, boom. I, I'm a, I mean, even when it comes to Pokemon, what do you collect? Fire and dark Pokemon. I like, um, I guess, it's Neptune. I always just liked her hair. And then, like... And Uranus kind of just like made me mad all the time. <laughs> um, and then obviously, like, yeah, Pluto. I love Pluto too. My nephew, like, my nephew is really big into Pokemon. So I, and that's, I'm like the only person in my family that understands, like, to them, he's talking another language when he gets into it. Um, but he shows up here and, like, I bought him 200 Pokemon figures and, like, hid them all over my house so he could go find them. And, like, I built – it took me 48 hours of work to build his own five-board Pokemon game that took five and a half hours to play. But, like, custom built for him, like, all – like, everyone in our family was a gym leader and he'd have to, like, go around and had these handmade cards, like – I take being an aunt very seriously, and especially if they're into something that I'm into, and I'm like, I'm gonna go all out on this you one. Be my aunt? Well, now like I got asked for a um, a Sailor Moon board game, and I was like, now that that one's that one's gonna be tricky. So, um, but I will do it. I will definitely. I, I have a hard time saying no, especially if it's nerdy and fun. Why did my my own mic muted me like nah? <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's the matter with you? I, think about it, though. You can always go, like, season, like, the first season where they have to find their transforming pens. Well, I felt so here's here's how into this I get because I have also have a deep love of Etsy. And because uh, that's where I, I got 200 Pokemon figures off of Etsy. And uh, they had, like, you can get, like, a button, like, the figures, you can get the pins, they'll even do some custom stuff for you, and I was like, I could spend way too much money and get them where they have to go, like, find their, like, exactly what you're talking about, and then, like, build a team, and they're, I've, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be another, like, $200 handmade board game, but it's gonna be worth it. <laughs> okay, Mike, you need to stop moving. I don't know what your problem is. You just, you just stop <laughs> and chill, okay? It's all right. All I know is I need an aunt who will buy me 200 Pokemon. I will find a place for them. That's fine. They're like this big, and there's like a thousand Pikachus in this 200 Pokemon set. But yeah. it's it, have, it was the best investment ever because, like, 
he makes and his own games and it's awesome. I love how it was bright when we were starting and now it's getting dark and now I have to turn on the light and now you people have to see my face again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but that is so cool. And yeah, I'm, I'm right there with this best aunt ever. Like, hell yeah. I'd be so, I would be stoked about that. I'd be like, eh, got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. I'd be running around with my pokeballs. Like I got this. Well, he's the one, I don't know if you saw on Facebook, um, I introduced him to Kingdom Hearts last time he was here. Because <laughs> I have that, the, um, I have all of the games on my PS4. And uh, so we spent, like, he, and I have Pokemon for him. And I, he also thinks that I'm, like, the video game master because he, like, can't beat me at anything. Um, so that's been fun. Like, Pokemon battles, I win every time. Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, whatever it's going to be. Come here, Erica. Let's see who the video game master no, is. No, see, I, I know, I know who I'm talking to. What I'm saying is, it's good to play against him because it's like, oh yeah, you think I'm good, <laughs> and then an adult comes in and then I fall down the ranks pretty hard. Yeah, but normally though, to be honest, I goof off in mine. Oh, watch this. I wonder if I can splat myself on the ground if I just don't pull out my parachute. Yes, You also yes, I play can. some really scary games compared to me. Like, I'm like, Pokemon. And you're like, how many crazy ways can someone get murdered? Like, with, like, totally different games. Look, that might be like... I've seen your channel. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you see my audition video that I posted? No, I saw that you posted one, but I hadn't watched it. You you got to watch it because I actually take an expert from one of those and where I'm being the killer. And I'm like, here, I fix and I hit someone. And I go, I fix. They're like, bad doctor. No, good doctor. I fix. <laughs> no, that's not fixing. Yeah, it is. Puppy! This is Rebel. <laughs> Rebel! The other one's too big to pick up. Um, Yeah. Because last time I talked to you, you were like, we should come play video games. And then I watched that game. I was like, man, it's trying to give me nightmares. Like, <laughs> I, play I am a turn-based, cute. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts took me 20 years to play because I was Fall like, guys. Ah. I play Fall Guys. I like Stardew Valley. <laughs> Look, okay. Fortnite's not scary. Rainbow Six Siege is it scary. <laughs> Rainbow Isn't there killer. shooting in Fortnite? <laughs> Yeah, and fishing. <laughs> Hi, <fishing>. Rebel Pebble. <laughs> and Cody, Roomba killer. <laughs> she killed two Roombas. Here, here. Fall Guys. I don't know that one. That was the first one. I'm going to assume that it's not like Stardew Valley or Civilization VI. I like really slow turn based strategy games. <laughs> no, it is a fast paced little. Goofy little looking pill things that you could dress up in bright colors and you go up against a hundred other people in platforming. It's like Wipeout, like the television series. See, it was the free game last month on the PlayStation. You know what feels like Wipeout? Is that Just Dance game my nieces and nephew make me play? <laughs> mm -hmm. Which I also beat them at. I don't know how because I'm like, I don't understand them as thing is supposed to work and they play some really like throwback songs like why are we dancing to backstreet boys <laughs> because they're back all right <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i just like how you're like man just try to give me nightmares <laughs> oh, but i went and looked that game up because you're like we should play in street and i was like no it was how many ways can like they were like hanging people on hooks it was like no not my i have a, it, a happy she's talking year. about she's talking about dead by daylight just so y'all know it's, it's but, not a very me kind of game <laughs> but i love horror movies like i watch horror movies at least two or three nights a week love oh, that. So the seven days to die is your type of game Living in the zombie apocalypse and building. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to experience a horror movie. <laughs> I just like to watch it. How about Ark Survival? There, no zombies. It's dinosaurs trying to kill you. Oh, okay. There. That seems a little less scary, I guess. It is. It is funny because I do love seeing how other people like certain other games, and my, I like survival games. I. 
my favorite games to play are the ones where I have to build defenses and I have to find food and I have to eat. Like I like Dead by Daylight, but playing things like Ark Survival or Seven Days to Die, where I have to protect myself from animals or zombies, build myself a base. I have to tame these creatures in Ark Survival, things like that. And I have to survive. I have to live. Those are the types of games I like to play, you know, to be prepared for when 2020 finally gives me my zombie apocalypse. It's, I mean, that's, it's an option. <laughs> it won't well, surprise me. <laughs> well, let's face it. Of all the things in the world, this is like the least thing we ever wanted. Like, we don't want this. Can we have, like, some sort of an apocalypse we've seen a movie on so we know what to do? Maybe, like I re possibly. I rewatched Resident Evil last night. And I, for the first time, this time around, I was like, huh. It's believable. Like this, this could be a thing this year. I won't be surprised. We're like, oh, by the way, we were trying to cure COVID, and we released some crazy virus. See, <laughs> anything could happen. There we go. I get you to play Resident Evil. Uh, I feel like that's. I, I like the movie. <laughs> Which is nothing like the game. The second thing's come at me of like my my nephew when he was here playing at Kingdom Hearts, like he's he reminds me of a little me because he gets to the bosses and he screams and he like comes running up the stairs and throws the remote at me like I can't do it. So I have to go down and like but I, I have that same anxiety to this day. I'm like, ah, oh, I can't. It's coming at me too much. Okay. So you're a Kingdom Hearts <laughs> fan. I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. Were you pleased or disappointed with three? Um with the story or the game? Either or. So, for those who may not have played it, I won't go too deep. But, like, there were times in that that I just popped popcorn because I felt like I was watching a movie and not playing a game. Especially, frozen like... Frozen level! Frozen yeah. level! Frozen uh, level! Tangled, because I love the... I love Tangled. So, I was like, I'm pretty sure they just took the whole movie and let me walk around a little bit. Because... There was no gameplay, and so it was a beautifully done game. Like, I thought the graphics were amazing, but I wanted to play more and less watching. Um, the story was, like, I kind of saw, like, I felt like, it was very, uh, um, Square Enix of them, <laughs> the way they took the story. It was, it was just, it was just like, I want to play the yeah, game. that was my biggest beef. I was like, it's gorgeous. I've waited so long for this game I and it feels like a movie I put, out, I put down how much on this yeah uh, that, yes i'm sitting here like this going can i play yeah. can i play? Can I play i've seen this movie i know what happens can i interact or something with it the second one will for like is remains my favorite game kingdom hearts 2 mainly because i get to go to the beauty and the beast world like the, the only thing that I didn't like about that is the sing along. It's like okay, oh, this is it. But I didn't Diana, like the sing along uh -huh. world. Yeah, uh huh. This sucks. Like, can I fight Ursula? Do I have to sing at her? Seriously? Where's but that's the? I my favorite think... world in the first Kingdom Hearts. Like, I, no. I couldn't figure out swimming very well. Like, I didn't like the controllers, the controls. But um, no, I think Kingdom Hearts Two has better worlds, like overall, yes, and better yes. stories within each world. Like. I like that. Is it? It's two where like Hercules ha actually has like a storyline, right? Because in the in the, fir in the first one, you're just going to the arena and battling. Yeah. So, um, and I like, yeah, I just like two, like the note. I hate fighting the stupid little desks though, because like Ugh. you have to like hit the, hit the triangle and like go behind them. Like I don't like the. I, I just don't like that. I wish I could just like go hang out with Beast and Bill and Beast Castle <laughs> for the whole game, but. Uh, yeah. No, the first two are fantastic. The other ones are okay, but three really disappointed me because I was just like... I thought it, visually it was fantastic. And, like, I love the world. It's like, oh, yay, Big Hero 6 and Toy Story is cute. And, like, it was very Pixar heavy for that. But, yeah, um, but there, there's something to be said when you're sitting there with your controller. And, yeah, I know my controller's on because as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going right back into a game. You need a Beauty and the Beast mural in your new house. Cody has been to my house, and uh, um, while I don't have a mural, I feel like that might be taking a step too far because every room has something Beauty and the Beast in it. I'm pretty sure can't this room might not, oddly enough. Okay, but. Erica, that's like saying, hmm, I don't know if I need anything else. There's something nerdy in every one of my rooms. <laughs> 
I don't know if you can fit. Let's see one little good spot behind you that you could put something. Oh, I make room. No, trust me. That spot just came available because I did some spring cleaning. I just got two new Beauty and the Beast t-shirts. Have you ever used the site Once Upon a Tea? Yes. Have you ever heard of that? Okay, yeah. Because yes. it, it was on the, like their special a few weeks ago. So I have a slight Beauty and the Beast addiction and I'm fully aware. Ooh. Just a little? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, Cody. Cody saw it, the live action with me the first time I saw it in theaters. But, uh, skip are you gonna because it, I'm Cody? I'm gonna Sorry. skip that because she's not gonna like me when I get if I gave my review on that live action. Oh no, yeah, that's like the one thing that I can point out about its flaws, but I don't want to hear them from anybody else because I get like really defensive. Like I cried, I cried that whole movie. But I will tell you this, thought. Erica, as your friend, do not under any circumstances spend that thirty bucks on that Mulan movie because that Mulan movie sucks. Oh, I refuse because I love Mulan. And I'm like, I know enough about what they did to it to be like, no, thank you. I will just go watch. And that was one of the first songs that I learned on my saxophone. Rebels being mischievous. We're going to take a tour. Uh You're unplugged. You're unplugged. I can't hear you. Can you hear me there now? There you go. Yes. Okay. Rebel just did something she shouldn't. Um, <laughs> so we're going to have to walk. Um, and walking. And but, walking. uh. No, like I totally knew they were gonna botch that. Like, there's no singing, right? And they took out the romance because they had the reason. No, ro no romance. No lucky no cricket. Mushu. No mushu. No dishonor on your cow. Like they they tried to make it really action, which I guess is like when the animated came out, there were people who had a problem with it. And felt like they made a class like a legendary story too cutesy. But I'm like, that's what I loved about that story. <laughs> See, what I liked about it was, you know, I love the music was great, um, and I actually liked watching a character who wasn't perfect use her mind to overcome obstacles, and. Five, four, three, two, one. Even though this really doesn't ruin the movie, but it ruined the movie. She's perfect. She already knows how to do all these things. It starts off with her as a child, already a master of the bow, martial arts, and everything else. She's already perfect. Wait. She already knows how. Yes, she already knows how to do all of this. And her but father what is encourages so cool her. Is that she learned how to do it. No, and then she hides it when she makes it to the army, because her dad, who encouraged her the entire time in the beginning, told her that she needs to learn her place. Yeah. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> oh. I'll just go watch the anime. <laughs> yeah, just watch the anime. Because you know how, like, there was the thing after the battle where she's, like, trying to tell everybody the Huns are coming, the Huns are coming. And they're and like, no go her. away, woman, go away, woman, go away, woman. And she has to prove herself again. They go from, in 30 seconds in this movie, we're going to kill you to go lead my army. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> the bad guys are not the Huns. They're called the, hold on, Morons, Rorons. And that's the only reason I can remember them is because I have to say the word Morons to get the fact that they're the Rorons. And there's they, like a witch, witch, right? It's a witch. Oh my God. The witch tries to talk to Mulan saying that she's the only one who can understand her about being a woman who's trying to have power. Oh, no. No, Cody, it's not worth it. Because she wants people to know her name, yet she's feared through the entire country. Everybody knows her name. Everybody knows who she is. And she's sitting there going, you understand me because you know what it's like to be a woman and to be pushed down. You're leading the bad guys. Everybody knows who you are. You should not be having this problem. No. And my favorite, I feel like any live action they've done. My favorite is when they're like they're attacking and they pan over and it's like seven dudes attacking. Wait, they don't have like the the epic scene. 
They have the epic scene, but like every time they're like, oh my gosh, the Rorons are attacking. They pan over and it's, they're like, left flank, go. And you see like seven guys go and the rest of the army standing in the back and you're just like. So is, I know they don't have the romance with the captain, but is there a romance with another soldier? Because that's what my friend said was supposed to happen, which also disappointed me. There's this hint. Which there wasn't never, a strong romance in the animated. Like, no, it was kind no, of no. It was, it was kind of, it's kind of hinted, but nothing really becomes of it. Because, I mean, you do have to face it. It's kind of one of these scenes where it's kind of forced in the anime. Yeah. Kind of. It's like, you don't meet a girl like that every dynasty. She should have brought home a man. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, would you like to stay for dinner? Would you like to stay forever? But uh, so you they know, don't have that epic part where she's like, because I love the montage of her, like, learn, like, as she's like training and getting better and then like she's the one that figures out how to climb that thing by tying the weights together like she, that's one of my favorite scenes ever she pretends to not know what she's doing and her power is she can kick arrows because she uses her chi yeah this is all about the chi so my suggestion is not Save you 30 bucks <laughs> and go watch the anime because it's way better. And I know a lot of people like, oh, but look, the great thing about the anime is that it it does have serious parts in it. But look at it more like a comedy, like most of the things are anyway, and you're going to have a great time. And it's it's a great movie. And it's I think for girls, it's more important to stop making these, especially when they're re-live actioning these guys. All these girls seem to already be perfect. They're so perfect. Why? What is so wrong with girls not being perfect and coming into their own and being who they want to be? What is the matter with that? You're teaching. I, I get I get the fact that they're like, oh, yeah, but feminism and girl power. Yes, but part of girl power is a girl going, I have these issues. I have these flaws. But look what I can do anyway and better myself. So um, I can't tell you to my, my niece, who is like my biggest fan, but she's wanting to be a writer and she's wanting to tell her own stories. And she ha it, it reminds me so much because she's like, she told me the other day she wants like a, a characters like her and she wants like girls that are flawed. And so she's made up this superhero that Adam's going to draw, which I'm really excited about. And like her superpower is her anxiety, which I think is so cool. Like, and I was like, that, that's, girls want, like, heroes like that. They want heroes with the, the same flaws that they have and the same issues that they have, but, like, turning that into a power. And I'm like, yes. I love that kid, and I love that story. I, love, I totally I agree with you. That I do. With someone like me, I would totally read that. She, no. she's gonna she's gonna outsell me really fast. It's like with her yeah, super awesome her superhero. You, you show me somebody that has depression or anxiety or any of the other things that I live with through on a daily basis, and they're still able to do these really cool, incredible things. I'd read that in a heartbeat. Over uh -oh. oh well, she's perfect. Tell Adam to read my comic script because that's the like the the artist one. Like that's the concept. Is the villains are all these like like depression and loneliness and anxiety and bullying, like they're manifested as the villains. And so they use their art, like whether it's dance or music or singing or visual arts to like combat the, those things. So I just need Adam to read it and want to draw it so that we can move forward with So that. basically you took my personality, split it in two and went, okay, here's Amanda's fun creative side and here's Amanda, all of Amanda's problems and we're going to watch her battle herself. Thanks. Yeah. You know, that, that was the but, situation. But it is, again, it's a great story. And um, I think things like that are very important in today's society um, because it feels like everybody's trying to constantly put you in a box, put you in a place, and say, because you do this, this, and this, you have to be this, this. No. No. Everybody's allowed to be whoever they want. It's kind of like um, you keep hearing... Every tomboy is either a transgender or a lesbian. No, they're just a tomboy. Well, I was a tomboy as a kid. And, I was uh, a tomboy as a kid. <laughs> I'm a cis, what is it? Cis, uh, heterosexual cis? Like, 
straight woman, nothing changed, but I was very tomboyish. But I grew up with, like, I always say I was raised by wolves. So, like, had two older brothers, a dad, and a mamaw who snuffed. So, like, <laughs> I just, like, right. was around that. But that, yeah, every, like, I remember when I was a kid and people, there were kids whose parents would say that I was, I was, like, going to be a boy or I was gay because I was a little tomboyish as a kid. I'm like, why well, put me in a box? I just happened to, like, that stuff when I was a kid. Yeah. It, it, it's there's not just let kids be kids let them figure out who they are on their own stop trying to stereotype them and I, that's why i think stories like that and what are important because when disney's constantly making perfect females or people are like well this little girl likes to play with gi joes and this little boy likes to play with dolls so they're obviously either transgender or homosexual instead of letting them just be kids not trying to box them so they feel like they have to be these things and just let them enjoy the toy. You know, they do that with the boys. Too. Like, I have a nephew, and then I have, like, a boy that might as well be my nephew because I love him like my nephew. And I'd, like, when you look at, like, the toys that you go buy for them, or the Disney movies, like, all the, like, especially when we were growing up, like, all the princes were the same. They were, and all the guy superheroes were big and muscular, and they have to, like, it really... I feel like they've come a long way recently with like their females, like with the frozen characters and trying to do different stories with their, their women. But I, I feel like we still have a ways to go with the men in these stories of like giving boys other examples of what being right. a boy can be. There's my soapbox. You know, really, really cool boys. We're unstoppable. Kim possible. Little nerdy boy still gets the girl. I have you, um, I guess it's not animated, but there's that one Disney show that's like, out right now where I think they did a really good job because they've like they was like one of their first openly gay kids sh like characters. Oh. I forget what it's called. I don't know. I know but Gravity like, I know Gravity Falls, they the two cops came out that they were together in it. This was live episode. action. But the what the other mm. thing was the girl, she was I think it's off now, but the girl was being raised by who she thought was her mother, but it turned out her older sister was actually her mother who had had her as a teen and then that like anyway i just like i was like kudos disney for like bringing in all these different experiences into your story but yeah now just fix your live action stuff and if you ever try to animate something like the lion king again and try to say that it's live action when all it is is a <laughs> reanimation i'm gonna smack you and that movie huh you can't I didn't watch it but i like don't hate me but i'm not a huge fan of the original just like it's the one disney movie that I just never really got it's, into. <laughs> there's a problem, like, there. I can nitpick anything. I really can. But there's a problem when you take the movie The Lion King, you go, we're going to live action it, but all you're doing is CGI in it. And because you're trying to use this live animal action lookalike thing, so you retread the exact same story. James Earl Jones, instead of just going here, we're going to pay to just take your voice from the cartoon series. We want you to re-say your lines. Sounds like he smoked now about five packs of cigarettes <laughs> before he got in there. So it's like, ah. Well, also, some of that just doesn't, like, I saw clips. I'm like, it doesn't work with that animation style. Like, there's no too realistic. Animation. Yeah. You know, you, you, know, you want to be fun or you don't. <laughs> you know, hey, we want you to smile. Now we want you to be angry. That's the reaction. It's an animal. <laughs> That's the point of being animated. Okay. I can ask Shigo to smile all day. This is what I get over there. Uh, but it was live action, right? But not. <laughs> oh, it, wasn't. It, was, it was It was horrible. I thought I saw more emotion out of Beverly Hill Chihuahuas than I saw in that movie. <laughs> and that's saying something. So I do have. So last time I talked, you suggested that I try Sailor Moon Crystal, mm -hmm. and I got through a little bit of it, and then I went back to the original. <laughs> of course you did. But that's because they change things, and like, so there's like on YouTube. So I spent hours watching the side by sides to be like, I know. I felt like I was had forgotten the story, but like they they do change the way things unfold a little bit, and it was just getting to me. So I had to go back to my creepishly young looking Sailor Moon. I look, I like Crystal, but I watched the original. The only thing that I cannot watch is I cannot watch the English version. Interesting. But I, I, I miss 
I miss whatever version I grew up with where they had English names because the voices were, and it's just because that's what I grew up with. Because the one they got on Amazon is in English, but a different voice, and they still use the original, like the the non English names. So see, you, you're you're used to hearing the voice Serena instead of Usagi, yeah. and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I know Usagi and Momochan. That's how, that's what I know. Um, I don't know. There's just I, I, I like the original Japanese version. I prefer my anime in its original Japanese version and reading the subtitles. It actually makes me try to learn a little bit of Japanese because uh, this goes back into watching Godzilla movies. And like sometimes I just kind of want to like sit back and listen to the movie, but I still want to know what's going on. So, and I watch a lot of anime from Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, uh, Attack on Titan, Food Wars. Oh my God, it's such a great anime, by the way. You go, that, all I'm warning you though, is eat and have plenty of food next to you if you ever watch this one, because it's going to make you hungry. Yeah, because an, like animes are known for like really good looking food. God. Like you're like, I can smell it. I want That's those all Sailor Moon does. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, junk food, like. I thought I could eat junk food. Man, girl could put me out of business. I warned the kids. I was like, uh, I will show this to you if you all promise after I show it to you, you will never try to be like Sailor Moon because she is the worst role model ever. I need you to pick a different scout and you can want to be them. And they, so I, took Mar <laughs> I took Mars. I took Mars. Tell, tell them all they have to be Mercury. Everybody has to like Mercury because she studies hard. And <laughs> they like Mars and Venus and Jupiter seem to be the ones that they, they really clung to, which is fine as long as it's not Sailor Moon because she's wimp and lazy and eats a lot. Even, even though I'm still going with uh, Mars and uh, Mama Chan made better couple than uh, Usagi and Mama Chan. I don't. It, it's funny because when it comes to heroes, I normally don't like the main character. Like, I don't like Sailor. I do not like her at all. She I loved her as a kid, and now I'm like, <laughs> you just turn it on when you have to, but the rest, the, like 90% of the time, you are a horrible, horrible yeah, I'm kind of like this, and we're going to skip past her parts. Got it, because all she's going to go is, eh. I'm late for school. Right, you're late for school. You need your snack. Mama chan, mama chan, mama chan, mama chan. All right, cool. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I think I got the first five minutes of every episode done right there. I had the biggest crush on him <laughs> growing up. And so, like, when he came on the screen before I knew he was coming, I was like, y'all need to see this. This was my boyfriend when I was like eight years old. Like, so, like, now that, like, every time he comes on, they're like, ooh, tuxedo mask. Like, <laughs> I like how she picks tuxedo mask, and I was all like, "Ooh, Jedi, let's go, Jedi, let's go, come on, Jedi." I think that's very telling. That's very, very telling. <laughs> it's like it's like we're playing. Um, they are they're doing this Marvel Fortnite crossover right now, and like they're like, "Man, you are grinding in that game. I've got to get to Doctor Doom." What's so special about Doctor Doom? He's my comic book husband. I have to get to Doctor <laughs> Doom. <laughs> I have to. See, uh, if I had a comic book husband, I think it'd be Doctor Strange. So, like, totally different. Totally different. Well, I, I love Doctor Strange. And my my fascination with him is because he was, uh, his look is based off of, of Vincent Price, who I adored and loved as a kid. Like, if I saw Vincent Price, I'd be like, <laughs> like, but... I Dr. Doom growing up, I was like, that dude's got diplomatic immunity. I want diplomatic immunity. I'm marrying that man. <laughs> Cody's like Bruce Banner for the win. <laughs> so Cody's husband's Bruce Banner. Oh, yes. Sorry. I was like, gosh, that's not Cody's husband's name. Um, yes, I that is Bruce, Bruce Banner. This is his favorite. Um, it's cute. <laughs> Uh, Just don't piss him off in a fight. <laughs> Unless it's the third, the last movie where it's like, I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the like calm Hulk. <laughs> I was torn. I was a little torn on that one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's funny because like I watched those, I watched the movies and the last one, I'm just like, um, 
Can we just get skip to the end? Because like I'm not it's understanding so any of it. I love I love the that. Like, <laughs> but I'm like, you, like opening weekend seeing that in the theaters and like you knew it was coming, but like as it started, like the whole thing, it was like the wave just went through it and like popcorn flying and people cheering, people crying. It was epic. It was I just like the, the beginning. At the beginning, you could hear a pin drop because everybody's like, okay, time travel. Oh, crap, we're doing time travel. Okay, so we can't do this. But they just did. But uh, 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 I'm confusing. All right? And this is what you're looking like at the in the screen. And then all of a sudden, you get to the end. He's like, Avengers Assemble. You're like, yes! This is what I wanted. This is all I need. I may have cried just a little bit. I'm so happy. <laughs> And then, of course, poor Iron Man. Oh, if I, if I had to pick a good guy to be my husband, the original Tony Stark would be that. If I, <laughs> I'm gonna, like, this is not the form to get into your dating life, but that makes me like, if you had to pick a good guy. If I have to pick a good guy. <laughs> Y'all are seeing a the theme here, right? She's like... <laughs> She's like, oh, the nice guy. She's like, Mama Chan. Or, I'm sorry, Tuxedo Mask. I'm like, Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I love about you. Is it, in, in all honesty, if it comes to signs, like, you're definitely the yin to my yang. We are so different in a lot of things, but we get along so well. You're the light side and I'm the dark that. side. Because you are also like this, just like what I love about Amanda is I remember the first time I met you and there was a, it was at that uh, Derby City or Derby. Derby that City. That's the first con I ever did. And that's where I met you. And you are like, you walk in and you're loud and like, you can't not know Amanda's there. This is my first show. I am a naturally quiet, very reserved person. Like I'm good and like, let's chit chat, but I'm not going to stand out. <laughs> I'm going to try to blend in. She, and you can't help it. Like, you just And someone was like, oh, that's Amanda. She's going to hug you. And by like the end of the show, you did. And uh, just like you make everybody feel like they're your best friend, even if you don't know their name yet. Like, and that was, and I've seen you at a lot of shows now. And not that I stalk you, but I do watch you and you know, like sometimes. And uh, um, it's hard not to be like, oh. Because you're you like your the attention immediately goes to you, but what I really appreciate and adore about you is just how you everybody is treated on an equal playing field, and everybody is treated like like the, the, your friend, and they're loved for who they are, and just that natural genuine kindness that you have, and that ex you make everyone feel like you're excited that they're there. And I've seen you several times over the years, and I know I only get to see you like once or twice a year, but I am so honest when I say like I really look forward to just like getting that little Amanda light. It's like the highlight of if I know you're going to be at that con, like even if it's just for five minutes, I got to go see Amanda because it's so genuine and you don't see that everywhere. Um, thank you. You're... I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I keep going. Apparently, I'm really good at making people cry. <laughs> Look, um, I, I know a lot of people will say, oh, but that's her job. But that's just, just who I am. Um, I know, I and that's what I love. It's not fake at all. It is so, so genuine. And there are a lot of people that fake it because they're trying to make a sale or they're trying to, like, get in something. And that's just, like, who you naturally are as a person. And I love right. that. It's one of the reasons why I like the podcast that I do, because I like having just these conversations. We get to talk about your work, but we get to have conversations and people get to see who you are. And that who you are as a person can speak thousands of words more than going, hey, this is my book and it's about witches and vampires, but not about the witches and vampires you know, but there's nods to the witches and vampires you know. Like, those are simple words, but seeing you and getting to hear your creative mind and your inspirations and seeing you as an individual, that's why I love doing this show, because it gets to show who you are as well. Feel good. Hug. Hug moment. And I still can't see, because there's still tears in my eyes, and I'm going to have to edit this and get those tears out, because um, you're going to ruin my reputation of being this badass. Well, hold on. <laughs> That's the other thing I was going to say about you. I'll wait. I'll, I'll subscribe. <laughs> I mean, you know, introverted, shy little me with my great modesty. No. I just, 
No, I got to say the other thing on my mind. So yeah. the other the other thing I love about Amanda uh -oh. is that um, I also just like I won't go into too many details because you you know your own story. But I feel like you, there there aren't a lot of women that I, you connect with at cons, and I've had my own share of like plenty of scary experiences over the years, and like so it's always good like. When you see someone, who, a, what, another woman who's just like really loves this world and loves these people and this culture and isn't afraid to like keep being themselves and keep proudly being a woman in this culture and in this world and like connects to other women. Because I've had several instances of people telling me like it's not a place for me and, you know, or just like it's. But yep. I, like you, you, you live it, you do it, you're proud for it. And like, I really, anybody who ever that. said that to you, dishonor on you, dishonor on your family and dishonor on your cow. <laughs> I just, I think like you, you, I have a, a really good friend, um, who does, uh, her name's also Erica, but she does a, like a YouTube channel, like women gaming. And like she, her whole like master's thesis was on like women in gaming and whatnot. And, and so we talk a lot about like the different experiences that, that you can only get it if you're another woman <laughs> living through it. No, um, no, no, I, it, I, I completely understand. You um, make cons more accessible for me, I guess is like, and being and proudly embracing the things that I love about con culture and nerdiness and geekiness. And like, I, I don't know your whole story, but like you do it with such a high level of like courage and like, this is me. If, you, if this isn't what you're here for, it's, then just get out of because you're yeah, going to be it. I love it. That is actually my story. I am who I am. I'm not going to change. Um, yeah, I have opinions. And there will be things. I mean, there are things that I work on because, you know, as society changes, I have to realize that some of the things that I used to think need to be changed. Some of the words that I used to say need to be changed. I mean, I'm a product of the 90s, okay? The... You used to, yeah. I don't know how old you are, but I feel like 89 born here. I'm slightly older than you. But like, anyway, here's, my, here's a little friends. secret. I turn 41 tomorrow. Happy birthday. Uh, that, that wasn't the point. Which I, <laughs> <laughs> the point okay, I like how, tomorrow. I'm like, Erica, come be on my show and talk about your book. What does Erica do? Amanda is amazing. No, that's not what this is supposed to be. <laughs> But it's it's why I said yes. Okay, I'm an introvert. I think you know that. I'm your opposite in that of like <laughs> I Do you think I'm that outgoing. <laughs> um but if like the chance to talk to you, especially since I can see, of course I'm gonna like jump on that. Like and you were like when Adam and I were putting together this con, it's like first person was like, Well, we gotta get Amanda on there. Like who else <laughs> likes to talk? <laughs> it's Amanda. <laughs> Which you have, whenever we get that going, like, we had such a good list. I've got a friend who does, uh, <coughs> she does costume designs out in Hollywood for movies and TV shows. And she's going to come talk about, like, working in Hollywood. Super excited for that. She's the one who did the cover for the the fairy tale story. Um, and then I've got a guy who does a board game, which it's, like, and he did Kickstarter and, like, got like it was successful i have the board game it's really fun but um he's gonna come talk about that and then adam got a couple like like com more comic indie creators coming too so like we have a really good mix of people because really we just want to create something positive like i miss being around my artistic energy friends like i just love how you're it. like i got this lady from hollywood and i got this guy did this board game and i got all these really creative people and then there's you no, like um, you were the first one. I was like, we have to get him in. I know, but it's like, <laughs> I don't know where I fit in this. It's like, we need the talker. Oh, well, I, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you're, but like, was this like the praise of Amanda show? It's like, you get your, per, your experiences of like, to be. <laughs> launching the, like, this here and the community of creating me with your gaming, your streaming. Like, you have really built your own little Amanda world empire of just like sharing your positivity with the world and and people like how can they come to our little virtual comic con and not be laughing and smiling after listening to you chat I don't, you, you could just come talk about your your wall of things and i think people <laughs> would be happy at the end of it and that's really what we're gunning for is like not 
we're going to let people excel if they've got stuff, but that's not the point. It's like, let's just have a, a day of positivity and like sharing. If it makes you feel any better, the only thing I can sell is me. So yeah. <laughs> come to her Twitch channel. Like, yeah, like I'm off. Oh no, she froze it. She's frozen. I'm not going to let you go. She totally froze. Uh, okay. So now that she's frozen and this is supposed to be about her, let's, Again, you guys definitely have to check out this woman. She's absolutely amazing. You could go over to her website. Bam, right there. Fantastic books. Definitely make sure, um, like I said, I just got her latest book, which is Sapphire's Curse. This thing is Witches and Vampires. Um, basically, witches created vampires with a curse protected from elves, but then they lose control. And it's just fantastic i love the fact that she's frozen and now i get to praise her yep there she goes anyway so this book is fantastic and again this is coming for somebody who the last time i read any books was back when harry potter was a thing so yeah so definitely check it out. She also has other amazing comics, uh, not comics, other books that you really need to check out. Uh, the Warped Ones is another fantastic series that you should check out. And you should also check out her kids' books, The Squid Files. Um, so make sure that you're checking them out. Make sure that you're always following her. You can also follow her over on Twitter. You can follow her on Instagram. You can even follow her on Facebook. Just believe me when I tell you, the way how she writes her characters, they're absolutely intriguing. And the way how she builds her worlds, you get sucked right into it. Like you, you see these worlds forming in your mind's eye as they come up and they expand. And she is where Bob Ross is a genius with a paintbrush. Erica Martin is a genius with a pen and i guarantee you and yeah i can actually see where the makeup actually ran thanks erica for ruining my makeup <laughs> i guarantee you you will not be disappointed in any of the series hi hi i don't know i just lost my internet for a second i don't know what you said in my absence but i agree uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> we went. We went from we went to what the show is supposed to be about, and we praised you and your books again. Oh, I miss it all. Look at that. No, that's not. It's not about me. I just want to catch. But it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Look, read up the bomb. AGP welcomes author Erica Martin to the show. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be the end of it. <laughs> well, you did welcome me, and then we took it in some new directions. That's that's. You don't go to Comic Con just to talk to me. You go talk to everybody else, and mainly you want to go see Amanda before you leave. So just like a real con. <laughs> Amanda would be the streak that's running through the aisleways because when it comes to Gym City or Champion City, Amanda has about two seconds of free time in the entire day. Yeah, you aren't easy to catch. So. <laughs> So you want to come early and set up early, and you want to make sure that you stay a few minutes after just so you can go, hi, bye, gotta go. <laughs> that is the one event, like, I'm going to praise Gym City for a second. I've, I've, I've been to a few, not probably as many as you over the years, but, like, um, even I've lived in Atlanta. I now live outside of Nashville, and I still will, will go to Gym City every year that it's open and that they'll have me because, like, that is my favorite culture of all the events that I've done, and that's the one that, like, I spent, like, I go up the night before. Do I need to? It takes me, like, two seconds to set up. I'm an author. Like, I don't have, like, crazy art walls or anything. It's, like, here's some books and a dragon, and but I will go the night before just so that I can, like, be there at open and, like, watch everything to come together and see all my favorite people. Like, Gym City is the most, f like, family culture of all the cons that I've done and that I did. That's, I'm going to keep going back. <laughs> yeah, Gym City is a great show, great staff, great atmosphere, and... I, it's it's like seeing family. It's like a family reunion, but without the fighting. I haven't been part of fighting, but I don't fight at my family reunions either. I just don't go to my family reunions. <laughs> I'll I will go you, to Gym City. I will tell you a story about that when we're done. <laughs> you're going to be like, they did what? And I'm going to be like, yeah, they did. Uh-huh. 
but that's not here to be <laughs> that that doesn't go out here but yeah um erica again i i've already said this and i'm gonna praise it again you um th this was the analogy i used bob ross is a genius with his paintbrush you are a genius Aww. with your pen the way that you build your worlds, the way that you take time to really develop these characters, you can see them. Like there's many times I, it's like, I can do this, you know, like how you squint your eyes hard enough and then you see like little spots. I can squint my eyes hard enough and I can see that world and I can see those characters. I just have to squint really hard to get all the light out. It's, you're a master in your craft. You really are. I can't and, wait for you to read the new one. It's not done at all. But it's monsters. <laughs> it's monsters. Monsters, yay! Monsters. That's the one that Adam just did that print of that I put out, and uh, it's the first time I've having him do characters that I haven't even like <laughs> written yet. I'm like, well, eventually I'm gonna get there. But it's like okay. epic fantasy, and like the, it starts with a gorgon, and there's like different made up monsters too all throughout, and it's like a little bit of sapphire curse gory, but like more like political ep epic fantasy storyline. Like it's kind of like warped ones and. Sapphire Curse mushed together, but anyway, I'm excited for that. The characters are even cooler in that one. I like that one. All right, guys, definitely go check the check her out. He again, here is her website. Again, oh, oh honey, I've got you covered. Trust me. <laughs> I, I disappeared and I came back and we're talking about me and it's like oh, it's like a party. <laughs> You know, and again, she's got stuff for everybody. So she's got kids books. She's got the Squid Files. Um, I highly recommend the Warped Ones. It may be young adult fantasy, but man, it's so good. It's so good. I can't. I yeah, can't tell Cody it. that if he's still on here. Cody, Cody. You should read the Warped Ones. You should read it. Not just because you're my best friend, but because it's a good book. <laughs> because Amanda told you to. That's yes. the why. And of course, don't forget you can follow her over on Twitter. She's over on Instagram. Basically pictures of my dogs. And she's over on Facebook, which is definitely pictures of her dogs. I don't put the dogs so much on my E.E. Uh, e. Martin Facebook. But if you were my oh, friend on Facebook, <laughs> that's all you're going to see. <laughs> but they're named yeah. after my books. So, like, it works. I think the best one was the other post the other day. I didn't take any pictures of my dogs. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got all that. It's the first, like, I thought maybe I had COVID or something. It's like, I didn't take pictures of them all day. You take pictures of them all. Are you dead? Are you dead? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so worried. I think that got more reactions than the pictures of the dogs. That's eh, just another one. What are the dogs <laughs> up to today? <laughs> but no, I mean, but again, it's just, it's because of who you are that is just so fantastic and it's just i thank you so much for being here today oh thank you for having me it's been way too long oh yeah well we're gonna fix that because you guys are gonna get your show and then i'll be there and i'll talk enough to last till 2022 we'll just like have you well we got we got free time bring amanda back on just amanda. Like, <laughs> amanda talk ba -da, ba -da, ba -ba. thank you so much for oh, chatting of course. with me it's always and fun Thank you, everybody in the chat. We love having you. I love building this community. Don't forget, if you want to support AGP, you can follow us over Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, you see the name right there on Twitter because that's where you're watching. And if you want to help us with Twitter, please follow or subscribe. Remember, subscribers can subscribe absolutely free if they're an Amazon Prime member. That means that it costs you absolutely nothing, and we're still able to continue making great content like this and even making content uh, with the Let's Plays that we do. Also, don't forget that this is September. What September means is this is a great opportunity for you guys to be able to subscribe if you don't have a lot of money. Right now with September, your first month of our new reoccurring one month subscription is 20% off, 25% off for the first three months and 30% off for the first six months. And this is a great way, again, to help build communities. Uh, with this, you will get amazing badges and emotes that you can use on the channel and other channels and you get to watch this stuff ad free so you don't have to wait for the commercials to get through so we thank you all for your support oh and check out the youtube page make sure that you subscribe ring the bell for notification get thumbs up on the videos um you know and it's just for fun that's where the edited videos go and of course big shout out to erica she's amazing we love her she's the master with the pen and we wish you all a good night Bye.